We have just another single issue this time, since we have a small flashback art covering a couple issues of Showcase 93 coming out of this one, after this one. So this time I'm going to be covering Detective Comics number 664, which is written by Chuck Dixon with pencils by Graham Nolan, inks by Scott Hanna, letters by John B. Costanza, and is edited by Scott Peterson, Go Flying Solo, with coloring by the legendary Adrienne Roy. We open with Bane, who has taken Batman's battered, beaten body, forgive the, forgive the Stan Lee escalateration, downtown, and is holding him aloft before the people of Gotham, proclaiming victory before he hurls him to the ground. I am Bane! This city is mine! Batman is no more! I have destroyed him! I rule these streets! I rule Gotham! Here is your hero, your protector! Take him! And bury him. Detective now, Montoya, is on the scene, along with Officer Mars. They radio an APB on Bane, and Montoya stays with Batman while they wait for the ambulance. I'm going to say, this is a moment that isn't referenced much after this event, after Nightfall. But considering that this is, at this point, probably one of Batman, of Bruce Wayne's lowest points, most traumatic points in his adult life after the death of Jason Todd, I wish they would do something to call back to this down the road. Particularly like, for example, in the New 52 after, um, with, with that whole thing, when they, they did do callbacks to... A one-off story in Booster Gold where Booster tried repeatedly to go back in time and save um, Barbara Gordon from the killing joke failed repeatedly. I would have liked something for this. Um, like, this is actually a closer moment to the um, to the, the scene in like Batman Begins with child Bruce Wayne and Officer Gordon, but except with Montoya and an adult Batman and with both of them having more of a familiarity with each other. I'm not expecting like a romance, especially now considering that Greg Rucka's run on Gotham Central established Montoya as being lesbian. But I mean, considering how prominent Rene Montoya is in the GCPD at this time, all the way up to her becoming the second question. Some call back to this would have been nice, would have been a really good thing to include, particularly if, well, again, once she became the question, once she succeeded Vic Sage, in some way inducting Renee Montoya as, an unof as a semi-official member of the Bat family, not like in a sidekickish role, but like in the sense of Batman, okay, I I know I can trust you, I rely on you, um, you were there for me when I needed you in the past, and that sort of thing. That would have been nice to call back to this moment. Of all the, like, lot, there have been plenty of other callbacks to Nightfall in the past, this one would be a nice one to have. In any case... The ambulance pulls up, crewed by Alfred and Jean-Paul in disguise. Alfred checks Batman out before he has Paul get him back to the Batcave, where they can stabilize him while putting together a cover story for Bruce Wayne. In particular, Alfred does the talking here to GCPD, and it's implied he's hiding his accent, which probably calls for some Hugh Laurie on house level of masking your British accent skill. At the scene... Commissioner Gordon is chewing out Montoya for Batman being abducted until Bullock floats the idea that the, maybe the people in the ambulance were with Batman. We're showing that Bullock he can be a solid guy for covering for Montoya, and also, if he's legitimately thinking this and not just covering for Montoya, showing that perhaps there are some depths to the bulk. Not the bulk, but showing perhaps there are some depths uh, behind the 
for lack of a better term, um, obfuscating density. At one of the Joker's safe houses, Scarecrow and Joker watch coverage of Barry's appearance in Fume, with particular Joker being very annoyed at getting upstaged by the FNG, the freaking new guy. And also Scarecrow for not actually getting any ransom money after all this. All the the gas, fear gas used, all of the work done with setting up the booby traps and all of that, all for nothing. They didn't get a cent. And, you know, fear gas, it ain't cheap. So the two fight. Scarecrow hits Joker with the fear gas, which he no-sells before clobbering Scarecrow with the chair and leaving, each of whom will have we will revisit later in their own solo confrontations with the new Batman. Well, with the subsequent Batman. In the Batcave, Alfred lets Tim and Jean Paul know that they need Decadron in order to reduce the swelling and save Bruce from permanent paralysis. In fact, John Paul is taken aside and is told that if they do not get the Decadron, Bruce almost certainly will never walk again. On the way into the town, trying to figure out where they could get it, Robin sees the bat signal and has an idea of how they can get the Decadron. At GCPD, Commissioner Gordon is waiting by the bat signal as Sarah Essen checks in, or Essen Gordon, and they talk about Batman as they're both worried. Also, does Essen have a rank? It, Lieutenant Essen, Captain Essen, Detective Essen? Like, I legitimately do not know what her position is in the Gotham Police Department. Elsewhere in Gotham, in the flop house, Scarface and Socko get in an argument while uh, Ventrocus attempts to moderate, and they end up shooting each other. You know, man, Mr. Socko really fell on hard times after Mankind fired him. you think after all his time with the WWE, he would have could have swung a WWE Legends contract. Back at the GCPD, Robin stops in the commissioner's office and tells him about the Decadron, and Jim makes the arrangements for having it available to get picked up, which Robin and Jean-Paul do, and they bring it to the Batcave. There, Alfred administers the drug, and now all there is to do, as the issue ends, is wait. This issue is basically a narrative release of breath. A chance for the readers to comprehend what has just happened last issue, and setting up that this is going to be a long-term thing, that, and that Bruce isn't going to be Batman for a while after this. If if you're reading this at the time and don't know, potentially ever. Um, with the follow-up questioning being of who will have the cowl. And whether it's going to be... like It's, it's not going to be a big battle for the cowl contest or pretender thing. We're not being as... like It's clear from how Nightfall has played out that this isn't being as derivative of what's happening on the Superman books with um, the death of Superman and funeral for a friend and reign of the Superman. But there's still the question, okay, so who's Batman next? Are we bringing, is Robin coming back? Or, uh, or is Dick Grayson coming back? Or is something else going on? So our next two issues are going to be a flashback arc set while Bruce is taking down the Arkham escapees. And addressing, well, of all the escapees we've, cut, we've seen thus far, what about Two-Face? After that, we'll find out who will wear the cowl. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.